This goes without saying, but design is but a small part of producing real products. So how can we turn this into something we can hold? Today that just got easier. Slicer for Fusion 360 will open up powerful production opportunities for makers everywhere. Built upon the 123D Make technology, this tool enables you to produce complex and otherwise machine parts from simpler, less expensive processes. Once installed, simply select a 3D print the design from the Make drop or button, select the body of interest, and designate the new method by finding the application from within the custom selection. This will take your model to Slicer for Fusion 360, where you can also sync your data by logging into your Autodesk account. No matter how you get your designs here, it's time to make it. First things first, we'll verify it's of correct scale. Then move on to defining the material that will be used to make the prototype. Here you can see I've selected quarter inch plywood, but any good carpenter will tell you to verify nominal versus actual dimension. You can see I've adjusted this to reflect my stock. Adding alternative materials and stocks can be done so easily, so make sure to keep this updated and accurate. From there, it's time to define how this model will be made. With this example, we can produce it with the default orientation to reduce cutting and bonding time, or just to simply rotate the slicing direction to better capture the shape, account for internal cavities, or simply make the finished part take on a different appearance. Slicer will report concerns related to the construction, label each part, and take this virtual design to a virtual production mode. The DXF to produce the cuts is simple to export to my connected virtual drive, or locally. And from there, I can begin the build. Slicer for Fusion 360 enables me the ability to make this guitar body shape from scrap plywood instead of an irreplaceable piece of black walnut burl the final design will be CNC'd from. Perfect for prototyping. But let's look at another model to highlight even more power behind this amazing tool. In this case, the chances of me finding a piece of wood this size will be slim to none, at least in my budget. All's not lost, however. Let's see what we can do in Slicer. Although we could utilize the same slicing method we employed in the last example, it's not the best. That's because this would still require about $500 worth of plywood and immeasurable hours of sanding. Let's try different construction techniques to enable us to capture the same shape. We can try interlock slices, which looks great and cuts my lumber bill to a fraction of the previous method, but it's still lacking something. Let's try the curved construction method instead. On first inspection, the resultant design looks about the same, but the amazing thing about this is how quickly and easily I can adjust the final shape. Dragging and pulling the curve dramatically changes the design, and as this happens, potential issues are reported dynamically in the cut layout and the graphics area. I can even animate the construction of this design. I'll let the software do the talking here. Incredible. This is the design I want to move forward with, so we can export the DXFs, PDFs, or EPS files for production needs. But that doesn't mean I'm done tinkering. Let's try a couple other methods, like radial slices. Even folded models are available. I can export the mesh file from Slicer to Fusion 360 and visualize the model in a little more detail before production starts. And when I want production to start, I can hop into the CAM workspace, use those DXFs, and start making toolpaths. Make sure to download and start using Slicer for Fusion 360 today.